Okay, now in this video, I'm going to give all of you just a general overview of the amazing tsunami of toys and pop culture collectibles that came out in the 1960s that were connected to the spy and the secret agent genre. But first, got to give you a little bit of a history lesson. You see, back in the early 1960s, there was this thing called the Cold War. And it involved two countries, the United States and Russia. And the two of them just did not get along. Russia and the United States. That couldn't happen today, could it? Nah, they get along great today. But during that time in the 60s, all the toy makers were saying, hmm, how can we make some money from this fad? Especially when Hollywood was riding high with the success of the James Bond films, starting with Dr. No and Goldfinger. You remember Goldfinger? That's the film where James Bond and Sean Connery were saying to Goldfinger, so Goldfinger, uh, do you expect me to talk? And Goldfinger would say, no, Mr. Bond, I expect you to die. <laughs> and in that film, there was this amazing car called the Austin Martin DB5, or the Goldfinger car. Now, this is a car that was made by the Corgi Toy Company out of the UK. Now, they were experts in making just incredibly detailed die-cast cars, and they made this one. Look at the packaging on that, and look at how beautiful. How could any kid in the early 60s not want this piece of toy memorabilia to race around the floor with and drive their parents wild? Anyway, this was such cool packaging that this became one of the most popular toys of that particular time. Now, once this toy became hugely popular, of course, they had to make other, other James Bond toys. Everything from, yes, even an action figure of Sean Connery. This was made by the Gilbert Toy Company. The, um, the likeness, well, it's kind of there. He looks a little, he looks a little stiff, but, um, you know, uh, yeah. If you were into board games, well, the Milton Bradley Company made sure that there was a James Bond toy for you. This was a card game that they came out with in 65. Not much to look at on the inside, but the graphics, pretty cool. And then there was this larger version of the James Bond Secret Agent 007 game. But what made this cool were the graphics, not only on the outside with a James Bond lookalike of Sean Connery and also Pussy Galore from Goldfinger, but on the inside when you opened it up, the same amazing graphics. Again, not that fun a game to play with, but boy did it ever look good. And you can't go wrong with some characters that include a Bond girl. However, the number one Big Mac Daddy of James Bond toys is this one. It is the 007 James Bond attache case, modeled after the same attache case that you see James Bond having in the film From Russia With Love, the third James Bond film. So it has all of the parts of the secret rifle that he would put together and the secret compartment with a knife that would come out of the attache case. Now this one isn't entirely complete. It's missing just a couple of things. There would be a little passport that would go in here. But if you were to able to get this in mint condition in the box, you might pay upwards of a thousand dollars or more. But it wasn't just James Bond who was raking in all the toy and pop culture collectible bucks in the early 1960s. While James Bond ruled the big screen, on the small screen there was a show called The Man From U.N.C.L.E. that was hugely popular. And this they were making all kinds of bucks through pop culture collectibles like Man From U.N.C.L.E. books and Man From U.N.C.L.E. trading cards. Heck, they would even make Man From U.N.C.L.E. albums and um, clearly the music was uh, one of the more popular things about this TV series. Yeah, the music. Of course. But they also made a lot of cool toys. So not to be outdone by the James Bond board game, the Man From U.N.C.L.E. board game actually was pretty cool, even better than the James Bond game. It was made by the Ideal Toy Company and featured some amazing graphics on the front. The main character, Napoleon Solo, played by Robert Vaughn, is here with his, of course, Uncle Rifle. And as you can see, this was a pretty big game. The graphics were, again, the main draw on a lot of these board games. But there were more toys, more toys that they came up with to feature the Man From U.N.C.L.E. For example, if you were a kid in the 1960s, you went to school with a lunchbox, a metal lunchbox. And of course, this one was merchandised for the Man From U.N.C.L.E. And the cool thing about this one is that it had 
all kinds of amazing graphics on either side in some amazing lithography. I mean, some of these toys, some of these toys in the lunch boxes just were actually kind of works of art. Now, what I like best about this lunch box is that the artwork on the outside on all the sides actually, was created by the amazing Mad Magazine artist Jack Davis, who created a lot of incredible cartoons for Mad Magazine through the 50s into the 60s. Now, again, these kind of lunch boxes are pretty desirable because you won't find them anymore because I think around the 80s they decided to stop making these kind of metal lunch boxes because little Jimmy in sixth grade would bang the guy up aside the head who's trying to steal his lunch money. But if you can get one of these lunch boxes, they are an amazing find. But there was a lot more toys that they made for the man from uncle. Remember the James Bond car that I showed you earlier from the Corgi Toy Company? Well, this is the model that they made for the Man From U.N.C.L.E. Again, having a lot of the amazingly cool graphics on the box and in the front. They don't make toys like this anymore. Even on the back, just all kinds of information that they would give for the kids all kinds of cool graphics. Let me get this in the front again. So, you know, this is the kind of stuff that they would make in the 60s that really just were the highest quality. Look at this. So they would even give you a little ring that you would wear around your finger. Even on the back of the box, they would have all kinds of cool information about the TV show. Again, graphics on the back. But if you go right to the front of this car, you can see some of the amazing attention to detail that they would put in there, even down to these little tiny hand-painted guys in there. Now, this particular car wasn't actually seen in the Man From U.N.C.L.E. TV show, but kids didn't care as long as it said Man From U.N.C.L.E. on it, and it was a cool-looking toy like this. Well, they were just happy to see this under the Christmas tree. And not to be outdone by James Bond, the Man From U.N.C.L.E. even got the same company that made the James Bond action figure to make action figures for the Man From U.N.C.L.E. This one is Ilya Kuryakin, the Russian side of the duo on the Man From U.N.C.L.E. And again, fashioned after David McCallum. And the likeness isn't too bad. It also came with a man from uncle badge that they would use to get into the secret headquarters. So those are just some of the things that they were able to put together for the man from uncle. Meanwhile, all the other toy companies were looking at all this money that was being made over spy toys by all of the other toy companies and they were thinking, hmm, how can we make some money off of this, this spy craze? How can we get money for ourselves? Uh, yeah, but we don't have the licensing for the man from uncle. And, like, we don't have the licensing for James Bond either. So we'll make our own license, our own secret agent. And that's when the Mattel company came up with their own special fictional license, and they called it Agent Zero M. And they fashioned all of these cool toy weaponry based on items that kind of look just pretty ordinary. For example, this looks like your average ordinary movie camera from the 1960s and you'd be cranking it and cranking it but then you see an agent pulling up and you'd pull the trigger and it would turn into a lethal lethal weapon it even had a compartment down here where you could put caps in it to make it fire and then when once you've dispatched once you've gotten rid of the enemy agent you just put this back and you start taking videos again. Lastly, this is one of the coolest toys from the Mattel Zero M line. Looks like just a simple pen knife, doesn't it? It's got a little plastic blade here. Doesn't look too dangerous, but then if there's a secret agent coming to bother you, you push this little secret button and suddenly it flips into a pistol and you point it at the bad guy and you say, you brought that stuff on yourself. So be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel at Tim's Toys, where in the future I'll be telling you a lot more in detail about vintage toys from a bygone era. Or else. Just kidding.